Welcome back. This is your senior beta cuck of the podcast, Tyler. Um, everyone knows it. Everyone knows. It. I like to communicate with my wife. Have a senior implies there's a junior too. Like yeah, um, it would be Ryan because he also talks to his wife, but he didn't outrightly say it in the real. But we are we are giant yeah. beta cucks because we like to talk to our wives before we commit to doing things. I think, in other words, we're just like we're we're good husbands. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry, beta husbands or beta cucks, good husbands, same thing. So I guess that's that was a zinger. So d- just ex- explain real quick what you're what you're referring to. We had a reel we put out last week about how trying to throw together a tea time is a little difficult. And I mentioned that I don't ever or planning say, a golf trip. Yeah, golf trip, tea golf time, outing, whatever. whatever. Like I I always like I check in with my wife before I say yes. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Because what if, if we're men? How often do we forget shit? A lot. All the time. A lot. So, quick check-in, but apparently that makes me a giant pussy. Yeah, so next time, Tyler, <laughs> don't check in with your wife. Just disappear on the golf trip for mm-hmm. four days. Yep. Leave your wife high and dry. Mm-hmm. And then when she asks where you're at, say, what do you think I am? Some sort of beta cuck? Yeah. Isn't it <laughs> easier to ask for forgiveness than permission? You're right. You're right. No, I'm learning. Oh, the, everyone's letting me know Figured I am learning that um, my wife just has to listen to everything I say. Even if I don't say it, she just has to accept it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And before we get too deep into talking about cucking, um, <laughs> guys, we're presented by Nikolai Lock, <laughs> only the best. Hey, talking to him today, actually. Are you? Yeah, he's uh, calling in the bellied up. Let's go. Yep, uh, our sister podcast, Bellied Up. Listen to that where all podcasts can be found. I'm sure you already do. Um but yeah, we're gonna talk to Russ today, so maybe uh, when he's on the phone, we'll schedule our call. Yeah, I mean we've we've been saying that for the yeah, last like, we'll, two three yeah. months. Well, we'll get him we'll, on we'll, here. We'll get him on. It's kind of fun. It's like we're putting a little. He's the man of mystery. Yeah. Well, and the questions just keep building up too. So this could turn mm-hmm. this phone call could turn into an entire segment. Yeah. Like, hey, Russell, am I legal illegally obligated to ask my wife if we're if I'm free to golf this afternoon? Yeah. Like, hey, well, is that on the marriage license? Yeah. Or is that like? D- in your vows, did you say, like, I vow to always ask you before I go golfing? Yeah, uh, I vow to communicate with you effectively. And then if that's not legally binding, I'm never talking to her again. Yeah, no way. Because I, I don't want to be so, I don't want to be a cuck, dude. That'd be bad. That's a kind of a good video idea is uh, like um, like self-written vows for golfers. <laughs> and if you lay everything out there at the altar, then there's no questions to be asked after the fact. That is true. Till death, death do us apart. Okay. Till death do us apart. Then, um, also, like I'm gonna be golfing at least once a week. <laughs> so, so hey, at least you're at least you're in the know on that. Till death do us apart, or at least for like four hours once a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually yeah. did see some dude comment about that. He's like, hey, I met my girlfriend and I let her know on the first date that I golf once a week, and he's like, I was upfront about it, and she's never said a word. It's been totally fine. And then there's on the other end of the spectrum, there's Jake who says, I play video games for five hours a night. And he's hey, as long as you're up front, dude, as long as you're up front, you'll find her. Yeah, you'll find her. She's out there somewhere. Well, yeah. And don't waste your time. Don't get into it for six months. and Be like, hey, I play video Mm -hmm. Mm games. I play video games for five hours a night. Because then you're just like, oh, I just wasted six months because now she's gone. I think you're fucking lowballing them here. Yeah, we got to bump those numbers up. I mean, yeah. five hours. Yeah. I mean, what? Let's see. I get off work about five o'clock every single day. I go to bed about three in the morning. So you guys do the math. There. Are you shitting me? No, Brian. What time do you usually go to bed? <laughs> like 11. Okay, oh. that's not too bad. Yeah. No, yeah so five to 11. Yeah. Supper, break mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm pretty close. No. Jake door dashes and has his roommates bring it directly to his <laughs> gaming desk. That's exactly um, it. Guys, I, I, I played golf. This last Sunday. Hell yeah. Um, and it was <laughs> no <laughs> way, dude. Yeah. So it ended, it ended up. So originally we had three guys and we had been looking for a fourth. Um, couldn't find a fourth. Now golfing out the lake is, is sometimes tough because like we don't have unlimited buddies out at the lake to like fill an entire foursome. There's like, there's usually three of us. The fourth one is tough to find. Um, classic the one buddy he backed out the night before so he did give us an advance warning it's like okay so we'll just, we'll uh, what time was your tea time uh 7 10 a.m so he backed Jeez. out 12 hours pr- before the tea time but it was like it was before we went to bed and not when we woke up so i, I i'm cool with that <laughs> um so 
it was just going to be the two of us. Well, Saturday night, there's a massive storm out at the lake. I don't know where you guys were at Saturday no, night. No, I got hit with it, too. Yeah. Oh, I, was it was, I just got struck by lightning. It was insane. It's so, true. So I, I'm leaving the house at um, like 620 to go pick my buddy up just down the way. And I get a text from him, and he goes, hey, did you see the courses closed this morning? And I'm like, uh, no. Thank God you told me because otherwise I'd have just been sitting in your driveway and you probably would have kept sleeping. It's like, all right, well, of course it's closed because apparently tree damage, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another course that's really close by. We're like, all right, we'll try and get a tee time there. He's like, okay, there's a 721 available. Um, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to snag this and then I'll call you back. Okay, so he hangs up, calls me back a minute later. He's like, hey, someone snagged the 721. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. So we end up booking a 741. Um, thinking I'm just gonna we're just gonna have to sit there. What's the deal with the one? Why why isn't it just seven twenty well, or seven forty? The tea times you should go in increments of like seven minutes. Yeah, may, yeah, something like How's that. The, okay. So that that's how like the the hmm. the weird numbers come into play. Um, well, we end up getting to the course at like six forty five, six fifty, and mind you, I don't hit range balls anymore. I don't hit the practice screen. I don't hit range balls. I don't do anything. Whatever my game is that day, I'll just adjust to how that's going to be. <laughs> Perfect. And you, that's the, what the first two holes are for. It, exactly. Figure out how you're playing. Yeah, that's yeah. what the first two shots off the tee are for. You know, you take one, like, okay, I didn't get range. I just had to get the back loose, and I'm going to take another breakfast ball, whatever. Um, so we walk into the clubhouse. Credit card systems are down. They're like, <laughs> all right, just play at the, or just pay at the turn. Okay, well, we forgot to pay at the turn, so we ended up paying after. It was, it, it was. You paid though. It was, we paid. It was a, yeah. it was a chaotic morning. Um, well, all the tee times before seven forty one, like none of them showed up. There was a couple groups ahead of us, but we ended up getting on at seven. So we're like, all right, perfect. We got ten minutes to have a beer afterwards because the wives think we're golfing at seven ten. Hell yeah. Just baked in a little time there. Um, I ended up shooting the. Best round of my entire life. Chaos, dude. You weren't Damn. thinking about the golf. You just showed up. The The conditions after the storm the night before were fucking beautiful. There was no wind. It was sunny out. Um, the greens were rolling like average, if not below, because of the moisture. Mm -hmm. They were soaked. Yep. So you could bang a putt from... 20 feet and land it right next to the right next to the hole Fuck yeah um i shot a 76 on sunday let's Jeez. go ryan is that a record Damn. 77 was your record before that's wasn't my that? the, my the best round of my entire let's life. go uh there was so everything started on hole number one um i hit didn't hit a good drive as it does <laughs> no but like like the no, start on the back nine actually <laughs> no it, the momentum started gotcha, on gotcha, hole gotcha, number gotcha, one gotcha. usually it takes me about five six holes to get into um Momentum started on hole number one. I hit kind of a shitty drive, uh, and I hit kind of a shitty second shot. And then my chip shot up to the green. What I, I left myself with like 40 feet, and I fucking buried it. Well, that's damn. Oh, and then you, that was just nice. fucking God. holster that gun back in your hole. Shooter. <laughs> yeah. For sure, because we're starting with a par instead of a bogey, and oh, yeah. that's huge. Um, second second hole, par three, it's like one. It's playing like one. 30, a little bit downhill. So I hit my 125, 130 club, and I'm like, I don't know, probably 30 yards short of the green, not just the pin, the green. Um, I end up bogeying number two, and then things just started to fucking heat up. I don't know what it was because I didn't hit very good shots in the first two holes, but the putter was pretty dialed that's what it is so from whole th i got my scorecard right here from whole th so holes three four five six seven eight and nine i had birdie putts on every single one of them jesus oh, i know, know how many birdies i hit out of that what zero one. zero <laughs> <laughs> i end up three putting number nine for bogey so i shot 38 on the front and then i bogey 10 i bogey 11 i'm like oh fuck and then number 12 uh, rolls around. I got another birdie putt, and I sink a downhill slider from, like, 20 feet. Come on. Mm -hmm. For the first birdie of the day, I go par, par, par after that. I go bogey, bogey on 16, 17. And then number 18, I – so there's water. You guys ever played Balmoral? Yes, I played it no, Saturday. I have, not. I have not. Okay, so hole number 18, 30? there's water. there's water in between the fairway and the driving range. And the miss is, is left. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can miss way left and still have, you know, 160 into the pin. I'm like, okay, I'll hit a five iron, which is the center of the water if I hit it really good. And I, 
I, I kind of hit like a high spinner directly at the water. And before we teed off, I said, dude, if I birdie this, I, this is the best round of my life. Like I got something going here. Why did you say that? I, you, I was that confident in my putting <laughs> at that point where it didn't even fuck it. Cause I knew oh. I was going to break 80, but you, you were like, you preach to not talk about it, but I knew I was going to break 80. I mean, I so get, if anyone's so going to talk about it, it should be you. So I, it's your round. That's at, true. At that mm -hmm. point, I didn't even think of, of shooting the best round of my life. I, it was more so like, Hey, I'm like, I broke 80. As long as I'm, I don't hit a, get a nine on this hole, exactly. I'm going to break 80. So I hit my, I hit a five iron tee shot directly at the water. And I'm like, Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I end up being like three feet short of the water. I, I hit a 130 yard oh. shot up to the green, probably 15 feet away from the pin. Drain the birdie putt. Come on, Damn. dude. The Come putter. On. The Let's pu go. Damn. Let's fucking go. Boys. Let's go. Remember, remember when I told you, you, you shot like, I think it was a 77 was your record previously, yep. right? Yep. And you're like, the goal is 76. I'm like, why shouldn't the goal be 75? I you know. were right. You were right. You got the 76. So that felt good. But then I'm like, Set seven birdie putts in a row with zero birdies. Oh, I know. Bro, hey, yeah. yeah. hey, yep, hey, that's yep. the competitive nature of me, though. I'm I know. A, I'm like, I, I'm always, I, I always want more. I want more. I, and, and mind you, um, so we did the math. There's on this course. There's probably, uh, there's probably four driver holes per nine, front nine, back nine, and I want to say I maybe hit like, out of the eight driver holes, I maybe hit three fairways, two mm. fairways, mm -hmm. but I was hitting GIRs like nobody's mother. For scramble golf, dude. I was scrambling well, but here's the thing. My misses off the tee box were so, f the misses were so bad. They were going in other, in the adjacent fairway. And I was able to have a good second shot from the other fairway. And <laughs> those clubs were on that day. So mm. the misses, luckily, I mean, Luckily, we were at that course that had holes you could hit, you know, from back to yours. So, and that that helped me out immensely. With you hitting your second shot so well the entire round, did at any point you think to tee off with whatever you're hitting your second shots with? No, because I knew I, like, I knew I could figure. I knew what I. I mean, had I'm not going to argue with your results, but I know that's what yeah. I would have thought of. Yeah, I knew. I knew I could I could get by hitting the driver mm. and missing if if I needed to. I mean, there's uh, Trevor number. It's like number six is a straight par four right next mm -hmm. to the road with trees both sides. It's two seventy five, and it's potentially drivable. I I hit a four iron off that one because it's just to me it's not a driver hole. Yep, I yeah. hit driver went left in the trees yep. and gone. And you're screwed. Mm. Um, what makes that round even more special? I mean, 76, 1776, America's Independence, USA, all that <laughs> shit that happened. I mean, it, it couldn't have came at a better time. Um, but what made this round even better was uh, one of my one of my best friends, good golfing buddy. He also shot his personal best round. Let's go. Plus, he had never broken 80 before, and he shot 76 with a 710 tee time back in Fargo. So we had the same tee times, we shot the same score, and we oh, both shot. Oh, I thought lines. you meant yeah. together. I was confused. No, no, no. We had the same tee times at two different courses. Um, we both shot personal best, and we both shot seventy six. Is it a little bit of a kick in the nuts that you set your record and then he ties it immediately? No, not at okay. all. Okay, I because that's because my my best friend. If he did that, I would feel a little bit like, hey, congrats, but fuck you also. It's like yeah, there, let me just have. Can I have it for a day? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there. I mean, there's the friendly banter there too. But I, but I knew how big of a weight that was lifted off his shoulders mm -hmm. because he's wanted to break eighty for like years. And I saw a someone put their scorecard up. They also had never broken eighty. Put their scorecard up on Reddit, and they were same situation as you, looking really good going into eighteen, and then quad bogeyed eighteen oh, for an eighty one. Oh. And that's the thing. If you've never, if you've never broken 80, like that's in the back of your head where mm -hmm. I, I've, I had already done that three or four times. So it didn't eat, like, I just knew nothing was really at stake here. Yeah. We were going to shoot sub 80. The fact that we birdied 18 was that much better, but it was, 
I don't know what it was. I was just calm, cool, collected the entire time. Because you were it's so chaotic in the morning that once you finally get out there, it's, it's true. Just, the mind's at ease. That's true. And the thing is, too, we the round took us like three hours and 20 minutes. Damn, um, but nice. we, we were waiting on people in front of us on most of the, f- the front nine until they let us play through on the back. Hmm. So um, it was – it was solid. And the key to shooting better scores in my mind, I had zero doubles or worse, mm-hmm. and I had zero penalty shots. I played with the same ball the entire the entire round. Oh, yeah, dude. So it was fucking sweet. That is fucking sweet. Congrats to Ryan. Round of applause. Wow. And also, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. I've, just, I've started playing better golf because I just care so much less about shooting good, good scores. Mm-hmm. No range, no putting green. We'll figure it out when we get out there. Whatever we're playing, we're playing. Yep. I just like now I just appreciate the game for being able to get out there because I don't get out there as much as I used to. Um, and that's I mean, that's that's key. It one hundred percent. Stop giving stop giving a fuck. Mm-hmm. As long as you're having fun. It's a game, guys. It is. Why you have to be mad? <laughs> yeah. Why are you mad? Um, have you guys watched Receiver at yeah, all yes. on Netflix? So mm-hmm. it's like Antonio Pierce had this whole the Raiders coach they switched coaches halfway through the season and he had a whole spiel about like guys this is a game we've been playing this since we're kids we're supposed to have a little bit of fun and so he's like Devontae Adams you got those dreads you score you shake them bad boys like for sure have a good time and then all of a sudden the Raiders start playing really good so it's like we are supposed to have a little bit of fun when we're out there, you know. Hundred percent. Like, yeah, we shouldn't be breaking clubs and and tossing shit the whole time. That's not fucking fun at all. Who gives? I mean, who gives a shit? Yeah, dude, you gotta find you gotta find small ways to like just make it a good time. Even if mm-hmm. you're playing fucking the worst round you've ever had in your life, you have to find the small little victories that like just like for sure. Like I've had just as much fun shooting a ninety six as I've had shooting an 86 before 100 yeah. percent, absolutely yeah. I, I played around on friday played the worst round i've ever had in my life but well not actually but definitely the worst round mm-hmm. of the summer i finished with like a 96 i also eagled a hole so, Fuck yeah. <laughs> so let's go but there you go so there's like it's like i i mean it doesn't even matter what my final score was i you got an eagle i got an eagle it didn't matter mm-hmm. it just well, it also yeah. I mean, it, it's it's big a, a big part of that is like who are you playing with? Mm-hmm. Um, if you're playing with sure. a bunch of, you know, guys who are taking it too seriously, like you're going to end up taking it too seriously and you're going to like match their energy and it's just not going to work out well. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, as I was saying before, we, it's easy for us to get three guys for a tee time, but finding a fourth out at the lake is tough. Um, but then I was thinking like finding a fourth, like being the fourth guy in a group, like, like joining a group of three as like a buddy or kind of more of an acquaintance. Like you're just kind of, you know, trying you're, to find somebody, you know, you're the pity invite. Yeah. So like, that's exactly right, Tyler. So when like, if you get a text saying like, Hey, do you want to be our fourth tomorrow? Mm-hmm. That like, that's kind of a kick to the nuts. Well, I mean, I think you gotta, you gotta be a little more like suave with that invite. Be like, Hey, do you want to, golf tomorrow don't Correct. tell don't tell anyone they're the fourth but i think when people are like hey you want to be the fourth tomorrow uh it, it's kind of a sound of de- desperation to where like the person on the receiving end is like oh they need a guy to fill a tea time so like well i'll try and make this work see like if you sent me that text i'd be like i'm the fourth person ryan's asked yeah, yeah. It, well that, that's yep. the thing it's like hey, he doesn't many... want to golf with me he's just desperate dude. <laughs> i got that one last year yeah. no you didn't yes yeah. i did yes yeah, i did i remember this no you didn't yes. it was mapleton me my buddy jared uh eric and then but i was the was fourth you. yeah but you weren't like you weren't last resort and i told because you asked me i told you that i said how many said, other people did you invite before me you, yeah. a, you asked me the exact that exact question i said i said i can't remember exactly what i said but i said maybe one or two yeah. um but yeah, getting the text of like, hey, you want to be a fourth is a, a huge kick to the nuts because it's kind of like, like, it's kind of like a job interview. Like if you want to solidify yourself as like joining the group or like going to play golf instead of, hey, just you want to come be a fourth, you kind of got to forget about the golf game and you kind of got to put on for the other guys. You got to have good energy. Yep. You can't get be getting pissed off at dumb stuff. Um, you got to be that locker room guy that everyone's like, Hey, mm. instead of like asking these other people before we ask him, like, let's just ask him right away. Yeah. And you kind of want to put up a good score too. 
Like that's low key in the back of the yeah, brain. I, yeah, yeah. Unless you're, I'm less worried about my score in this situation and more how I like Ryan said I affect the vibes of the group and how I affect the pace. Because yeah. if I'm like if I'm shooting a 98, but I'm playing fast and I'm not slowing these guys I just met down, that doesn't bother me, Definitely. and I don't think it bothers them really either. But if I'm shooting a 98 and I'm lining up every putt for six minutes and searching for my ball for way too long and just being an absolute turtle about it, then I'm going to be a little frustrated. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Um, also, when people ask you to do that, no one texts you and says, hey, man, I need a third tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> no, we'll yeah. second, yeah. you know? no, it's like, hey, you want to play? It, then it's like, hey, you want to play golf tomorrow? We got we got two already. We're looking for looking for two more. You're trying to or whatever. swing them? Trying to swing them? Yeah, hey, yeah. Swing them? Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're trying to knock some balls around tomorrow. <laughs> hey, man, will you be my second tomorrow? It's just a long way of saying you want golf. Hey, man, got an extra seat in the cart tomorrow. You want? Uh, you trying to go knock some to, balls around? You want to go? Fi- you want to fill my seat in the golf cart? <laughs> uh, you want to go so, whack rocks? How yeah, many I, different ways can we say you want to go golf without saying you want to go golf? Yeah, you want to go swing the sticks? Want to oh, yeah, hit the cool. links? Hit the links, uh, knock some, some balls. Whack fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah you want to go? Uh, you want to go lose some balls tomorrow? You want to go get really mad? <laughs> <laughs> want to go slam some beers uh, on the grass tomorrow? Oh, on the Ooh, grass. I, I like that, that one. one. You want to hit the grass tomorrow? That's good. All right. Uh, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I babysat three kids so my wife could golf because I'm the biggest beta cuck <laughs> in the room. <laughs> That's where we were going with this. This is Jesus. Was a twenty minute long setup, Tyler. Yeah, nice. I, well, I was gonna, but I wanted to hear Ryan's story because I knew he was very excited about it, okay. and I didn't know what it was. So, uh, but yeah, just polar opposite. I I watched all three of my children for four and a half hours. Holy shit! It, it was I was an eye opening experience. It was the first time I've had all three to myself. I actually called in my brother in law for help. Really, yeah, Gabe? Cause, yep, my because nice. my wife was golfing. With my sister, his wife, and I was like, "Dude, I know you're not doing anything. Before <laughs> I come over here and entertain the old ones while I watch the baby." Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it was eye opening. So I'm just gonna have to f- suck it up for two years until this kid is up and moving and can entertain himself with his brothers. Cause it, it's it was it was interesting. Yeah, you got the older two that just want to run, 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 and obviously the baby can't. You got to be holding him. He's got to be drinking milk and changing diapers left and right yeah. you take your eyes off the off the kids i look over my two-year-old's eating fucking ash out of the fire pit <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he literally I, I was changing a diaper i look up and my two-year-old is elbow deep in my dad's fire pit because we we're at my dad's and he pulls out a wad of ash from the fire pit and just shoves it in his mouth i'm like god Damn it, dude. Holy shit. But I watched Damn. alone. He had I his hand in the urn of my great grandma's ass. <laughs> 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 and he just took a bite. <laughs> no, but I saw an alone that it's good for gut health, so I let it go. Oh, yeah. Just let him figure nice. that one out. But yeah, very, very different. I did play the three hole. Like, good loop for stem, like good stem cells in there still. Yeah. Maybe the stem cells have preserved it. Maybe. I, I don't maybe. Know. Maybe kid's those gonna didn't burn. Fuck, kid's going to look like he's on creatine at two years old. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what'd she shoot? Uh, so so they played my my youngest sister is moving to North Carolina and so they had like a going away party girls morning like brunch and golf situation oh, nice so they did a two person scramble and I've told you stories about my wife golfing before she's she's the angry golfer yeah she's uber competitive uh but I think and she's not very good when she golfs with me apparently I'm the problem because she's good when I'm not there. I would, uh, I can probably, I can attest to that with my wife too. Yeah. and um, I'd, She I'd, would probably play much better if I wasn't there. Well, and the thing is, is like, I'm not pushy with her. Like when we're golfing, like if she wants advice, I'll give it to her. If not, I just stay quiet and like watch where her ball goes. And apparently when I'm gone, she's a stick. I mean, a stick for the, the <laughs> level of golfers that were there. That yeah. She's just nervous. She's trying to impress you. But yes. She, and she, it's like, she... She may think that you're getting frustrated with how she's playing, mm-hmm. which is why she's getting frustrated mm-hmm. playing with you. But in reality, like in reality, you're not getting. Frustrated. I could that's care just, less how she plays. What's going through her head? Well, like I, apparently she got her own par. They, they did two person scrambles, eight gals. They did four teams of two. Um, she got her own par, like almost drove a green and then chipped on. Hell yeah. 
yeah. he put it in. You should have. Uh, I, I. It would have been great to interview the group behind them. Yeah. Just see, <laughs> yeah. If, there, oh, see if there was any issues. Like, uh, like their group comes in. Like, hey, honey, I'm just gonna sit here and hang out. Well, what are you doing? I'm, ah, I'm just gonna hang out. Uh, next, their next foursome comes in. Uh, hey guys, hey sis, how you doing? And whatever. Yep. See you on your way. And then wait for those guys in the parking lot and be like, how was it? <laughs> like, uh, well, I mean, what, what in your head, what were you thinking this entire round with two, uh, female foursomes in front of you the entire time? Uh, it sounds like the, actually I did ask about like, was the course busy? The group behind them was an eight some on one team. So they weren't worried about shit. Yeah. What wow. course allows this? Crazy, man. No rules, baby. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Of course oh, not. Totally. Yeah. That they're super chill. So and I'm, it sounds like they got done with golf relatively quick. They just had that brunch thing. That's why it took four and a half hours. Yeah. And I thought it took them four and a half hours to play nine holes. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I you're I like that's kids. my line. I got kids eating ash right now. Yeah. <laughs> One of them's fucking in the woods. I don't know where he went. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what I've noticed lately too is that, um, okay, we say we're gonna go golfing um, about four hours. You kind of bake in four hours. It's like you know, f- twenty minutes to drive there and get up, get ready for your tea time. Twenty minutes to like bring the get all your shit back in the truck, drive home. Four hours, maybe a little bit more. Um, I think my wife has been doing something similar with, uh, when she runs errands <laughs> because she always tends, she always is going to go run errands at nap time, which is fine. Cause like little guys nap and whatever, I'm just hanging out. Um, it's like, Oh, you're just going to go to TJ Maxx. Okay. I'll see you. You know, I, I expect to see you in probably like 30 to 40 minutes. It's like an hour and a half, to two <laughs> hours later. And now I understand like sometimes where the frustration comes from of like, Hey, I said, I'd be back in four hours, but you know, slow p- pace of play, and we had a beer afterwards, and it's five hours later. Like, I, I kind of get it now. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that, like, that tweet where s- some gal tweets out? She's like, hey, my boyfriend's golfing this weekend, and he told me that it's probably going to take, like, seven hours to golf 18 holes. Is that mm-hmm. accurate? And everyone in the comments is just guys supporting guys. We're like, seven hours, that's fast. Holy shit, I usually take nine and a half. Good on your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and all the comments were like, whoa, that's low. That's low. That's low. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> that guy's in the fucking clear. He is good. He could be gone all day. Yeah, until uh, she just stumbled. You know, she's digging through his phone trying to find out if he's cheating on her. Mm-hmm, true. And then well, she I mean, runs across his 18 birdies app and sees that a round took three hours and 30 minutes. Yeah, you just don't save an exit. Just leave that's it open. True. And then mm-hmm, get hammered true. at the clubhouse. That's very true. Um. So yeah, yeah. That's my I, I golf the three hole loop, uh, hit every green in regulation, and then putted terribly. That was that's my only golf story. Uh, but yeah, carry on. I played Saturday at the course you played at. We had a foursome in front of us, and it was why'd you call me? He uh, already had his fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually? No, it was only just two of us. We were just going to the lake to his lake, and there's. Hey, want to be my third? Sure, mm, sure. I'll play. You're probably busy, you know. I was. It was a last minute time. There. Yeah. So I went there, and the guys in front of us had like a one o'clock tea time. We had like one thirty. It's like, oh, nobody's in front of you guys. Gonna go play. So by the time we got to the tea box, after getting our carts and everything, they were still not even done with hole one. This is like twenty minutes Ooh. later. So like, are you kidding me? So like, okay, hopefully they let us play through fast. Like whatever. Get going. We keep playing. Never let us play through. And they like we're waiting every single tea box, every single shot. Was there someone in front of them? Nope. So. God, I eventually we get to nine they didn't let us play through on 10 and they're still going so we get to like 11 or 12 and we're like do you want to wait here i'm like no let's just drive by drove past get to the next hole and just played through and just skipped the one hole and then on the one hole we skipped through on so we finished i think it was a par four on the back of the end, 12 and 13 is a par five on 13 i hit my drive a little yep. left and then whatever go they're driving past us now we're going up to show go find my ball. Somebody goes, were you hitting a Callaway? He goes, uh, yeah, but I picked up this TaylorMade. It was my ball. Oh, my so God. So not only were they dude. playing slow, they stole my fucking ball on a hole. And I'm like, are you kidding me? To be fair, did they know you skipped past them? Yes, we drove her literally right past okay, them. Okay, never mind then. I was going to say, if they didn't know... You, you ran past them. They thought there was no one in front of them, you could, so it was just a random ball. You could also see us like from yeah. where All right. we were. All right, I'll any, stop uh, defending them. It's any, bullshit. They shouldn't have picked it up. Any words as you pass them? Any, like, uh, you give them a little, like, t- like 
two no. figure wave or anything like that? No. So we like, like they were probably 19, 20 year olds and they had we had so much time. Like we were waiting, we we're on the tee boxes when they're still teeing off and they like just didn't even give us time of day. So, here's a piece of advice I learned this trick um on how to get a group to let you play through. So if you end up on the same tee box as them, you keep a pocket knife in your bag and then you slash their fucking tires so they can't drive off and then you can play through them. Okay. That's actually perfect. Yep. That's not bad, Tyler. Yeah. I'm not going to lie that. Yeah, that's yep. clicking in the brain right now. So that that's just something I picked up um, from prison golf. Cuz then yeah, cuz then they're going to like they're going to be probably liable for the mm-hmm. to replace the tires. Yeah, there's no cameras on the yeah, course. It's true. not like it's your word against theirs. Who's the one playing slow holding up <laughs> play? They're going to blame them. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, Disclaimer: That was a joke. Don't <laughs> slash any <laughs> car tires. But yeah, that was uh, not a fun round. So I played like shit, and then the next day I went to Peewood National and shot like four over. Let's go, dude! I love Peewood. And it should have probably been two over, but missed couple putts. You guys want to golf Prairie Wood this weekend? Uh, I, I'm actually golfing uh, five some on Saturday. Where? Balmoral, same course. Mm-hmm. They allow five sums now. Hey, do you um, want to be I, my fifth? I will be gone this weekend. That was a joke. I was just making fun of Ryan. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'll be your sixth, though. That's kind of cool. Yeah, first alternate. Yeah. Yeah, first alternate, <laughs> second alternate. Um, yeah, imagine <laughs> if you already had a foursome, and you, you even had a couple guys being like, hey, I can play this weekend, but you had to text back saying, ah, shoot, we already got we already got." We're four. actually full now. Imagine if you were just like, but you can be my you can be my first alternate, or you can be my third alternate, <laughs> or uh, in case somebody drop or, people drop out. Or like your idea. I'm you text a whole group of guys, like whatever you got, like eight guys you golf with. First three, you're making the tee time, and then wait list the rest. I think that's yeah, fair, yeah, though. Absolutely. If you text them all at once, but, like, if you're shooting out – so let's say I need a fourth, and I just shoot texts out to each of you individually, and then Trevor says yes first right away, and then Jake says yes, and then Ryan says yes. I, I don't know Dude, what to that's do. that's tough. That. I don't know yeah. what to do, and that's – I'm – so Midwestern that I'm likely to just not golf myself <laughs> and give one of you guys the spot. Yeah, or try it. Like, hopefully there's a tee time right behind you or right in yeah. front of you that you mm-hmm. can just book another one for those guys. I was thinking about that, too. Um, you you have to fire off multiple texts to get someone to come play because w- what if the first guy you text doesn't answer for a couple hours? Right. My, I, give him a, I give him a one-hour grace period when I do this. Like, if they don't text back, I got to be like, hey, I'm sorry. I asked Lane, too, and he said he's going he's gonna to play. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be like a first come first serve. Type yeah, thing. yeah, but I I hate I never rattle them off like all at the same time. I always give like so if I text Trevor first, I will wait about one hour before I text another person. See, I always fire off I, I fire them off all at the same time, but I I do put in the text like um you know I also got feelers out to a couple more people. So Smart. like if you, you gotta can, have a disclaimer, you gotta <laughs> have a disclaimer because then you have to disappoint multiple people if yeah, they all want to play you're it. for sure gonna piss in someone's cheerios if you don't put the disclaimer in there. definitely and, and then maybe maybe like if if you text three people if i text all three of you guys y'all say you can play but tyler says you can play first um i might give it about an hour before i text both of you guys back saying hey we I, we actually we do have a fourth mm. um because if Tyler, for instance, like has to go ask his wife because he does that because I communicate mm-hmm. and then figures out he's got something going on, then it's like, OK, well, at least I didn't deny both of you guys a chance mm-hmm. to come play. You give me an, a chance to get a, say no again. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, it you d- you definitely got to structure things correctly so that you don't have to have the conversation of like, hey. I know I asked you to play, but I actually don't need you anymore. So sorry to get your hopes to, up, but we're stay home. Have to move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, and you don't want to. Ha- and and then you, you just if you, if I ask you two to play again, what are you gonna be like? Oh, you know, you're gonna tell me you're gonna ask me to play and then tell me no again. It just it it looks bad. Yeah, that's why I don't like to be the guy who schedules the tea times. Yeah, no, because no, I'll commit fully, and then the other person is like the guy who schedules the tea times is usually the person who is trying to put the entire group together. He's also the most free. Correct. It's like, mm-hmm. it's the single guy in your friend group. Definitely. With yeah. no children that is scheduling the tea times and then putting the feelers out. Absolutely. Like I love being the invite guy. Cause I don't have to set shit up and it's just like, all right, well if there's no tea time, whatever. 
I'll go play the loop. You just say yes or no. You don't have to schedule, ask people. Yeah. Yeah. That's so much nicer. Being the second, third, or fourth. I mean, fourth fourth is a tough job, especially Mm -hmm. if they ask you, hey, you want to be our fourth? It's a tough job, but being the second, third, or fourth is a great position to be in because you ain't, you just got to show up. You got to say yes, and you got to show up on time. Those are two easiest things to do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you guys want to hear about a little tea time predicament that I had this weekend? Hang on. We, okay. One more question. How how deep uh, – so everyone has a mental list of guys that they'll, they'll play golf with. Mm-hmm. How deep on that list will you go before you just accept that Give you're up. only going to play with three, two or three people? It really depends on the time crunch I'm on. So if this is a situation where like I have a tee time the next day, I'm only putting out like th- three or four feelers. Okay. And if it's a, like a week in advance, I'll just text people throughout the week until I have it filled. Yeah, definitely. Like, and then if I run out of buddies to text, I'm asking the office. I'm, how deep, how deep is your list? <sighs> oh, I mean, there's probably like, 10 people that I would golf with. Sure. I'd say mine's my mine's about 10 as well. Yeah. And like there's there's the three mains for sure. But then after that it's like I golf with the rest of those people like once or twice a year. Well, yeah, and you kind of like the list gets filtered through based off of the other people that have already committed and are playing. Mm-hmm. Like is the is number seven on the list gonna gonna vibe with number three? Vibe yeah, well yeah, with yeah. the third in my group or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, you it's you kind of got to pick and choose because you don't want to if you put to sometimes I don't know if you put together a hodgepodge of people sometimes it ends up being great, uh, but sometimes if you're like, all right, well, you know, my one of my good buddies, uh, you know, there's been some drama between a coworker of mine and. Uh, you guys know yeah i know situation. what you're saying yeah so it's yeah, like yeah. it's like i know that the guy working here would love to golf and would say yes but because i'm golfing with this buddy he's out of the picture because i don't want to have to deal with that you know i know exactly <laughs> so what it's, it's, yep. it's one of those situations where you you kind of you got to take a good deep look into who you're already playing with and then pick and choose from there. Yeah, absolutely. Or like one thing that I do when I'm trying to fill a tee time is that depending on how long I have until that day, like say I have three days in advance, if it's any, like if it's anywhere less than 24 hours in advance of trying to invite people to a tee time, I'm never going to text you or Tyler <laughs> to try and fill it. Cause you guys yeah, got it, kids. It, it's just, you know it's I an can. automatic. Yeah, no, you know yeah, for sure. Unless I'm home alone that weekend, like maybe just looking for stuff to do. Uh, there's a good chance I'd be able to then, but that's not often. Yeah. Like honestly, the, if, when you get to a situation like Ryan and I, you just have to be very upfront about your schedule. Like my best friend, he knows that if the tea time is not right away in the morning or an evening tea time, I'm out. Yeah, for sure. So if he has a one o'clock tea time, he knows I'm not going to be able to play. So he just knows not to ask me. But yeah. if it's a yeah. seven a.m. or a four thirty, then he'll ask because he knows that I could probably do that. Yeah, like. I mean, when it comes to YouTube, if it's not two days in advance and it's not right. a morning tea time, I just know I'm not going to, you know, yeah. I'm not even going to reach out to you guys. I, the, so the top, sorry, back to the, back to the, your list of golfers that you'd ask to come play yeah. the, the top guys on my list. Um, I typically wouldn't ask them to play in a foursome because either like they're on a different lake or, um, I don't know, they like they have other shit going on and they also have their own golfing buddies, but the top guys on my list are the uh i'll say like salesman type meaning like they can talk to just about anybody and like they're good vibes and they can they can have a conversation with a brick wall that's yeah. who i'm texting <laughs> first because then it doesn't really matter who i'm playing with because i know this person's going to get along with them and we're going to have great conversation yep yeah you want to maybe the wrong word um I, I, we got yeah, yeah, yeah you want to yeah. fill up the roster with utility yeah. guys yeah for yeah, sure absolutely yeah and then after that then you get you know then you can pick and choose who you want and what role afterwards yeah. you know then, yeah then it gets a little more dicey like, yeah they're like yeah. all right should i grab should i invite the stick or should i invite the good times guy or should i you know what i mean yeah yeah and i jake i know you have a, a story you want to tell i think we should take a break first and then yeah, we'll get back to it all right yeah. sounds good all right, we're back from the break. Jake, uh, you had one more point to piggyback off of uh, what we were just talking about. Yeah, I mean, um, I just had a funny thing with – uh, I was going to golf Sunday night with a couple buddies, and we had four of us all together and all that shit. And then about 20 minutes before the tea time, uh, my buddy tells me, like, hey, man, we're just going to have to squeeze in all four of us because I only booked three. 
oh fuck on the tea time so we only have room for three and i was like well what the fuck are you doing <laughs> who does that <laughs> I don't know. He was like, they allow five sums. So if there was a solo, then we would just golf as a five sum. And then I was just like, I'm just not going to golf. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'll just, yeah. I'll just not I just, golf. I don't know anybody that just on purpose only gets three and then puts out feelers. No, even if I'm the only one golfing, like if I haven't asked anybody, I'll still book it for four. And this is obviously if it's a couple days, it, it's before the 24 hour cancellation. Yeah. Window. Yeah. Um, so I'm always booking for four to try and scratch four together. And if I can't, you know, by 48 hours before or whatever, cancel two of them. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. just call the course and be like, Hey, I only got two coming tomorrow. Yeah. Unbelievable move. I mean, that's the right <laughs> way to do it. Uh, but yeah, then I just backed out. I was like, I don't, why Fair would I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll, I'm not going to be the fifth add on guy. I wasn't even the last one invited, but I was just like, you know what? Just you, out of you respect for, for the, the rules. Team. Yeah. I just took one for the team and just, I also just got back from the lake too. I was pretty fucking tired. So, well, and it, like, it's again, it's great when other people can book the tea time because you say yes and show up, but there's this trust factor in like, is my buddy a dumbass and <laughs> <laughs> would book for three and ask, uh, ask, you know, f have four and then ask four and then just show up and be like, yeah, so we're going to golf as a five sum yeah. with the solo. So yeah, I don't know. In other golf news though, um, I have been, I mean, Ryan, you and I, we both like sports cards, right? Big time, it's big time. A uh, lot of eBay shopping going on between you and I buying big time. rookies and autos and stuff. Uh, fell down the golf rabbit hole on eBay last week. Mm -hmm. um, guys, you guys are missing out on the best golf deals on the internet on eBay. I'm not even joking. Some of the clubs on there are dirt cheap. Like if you're just going to buy a single club because people w want to just get rid of their one random club that they have, right? Some people wind or up. Or the one they stole. Or that, the one they found on the uh, green. Yep. Yeah, that too. <laughs> That is true. Uh, thank God that golf clubs don't have serial numbers. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> yeah. we'd be <laughs> yeah. scratching yeah. those. Yeah. Different yeah. story. Um, guys, I got a Vokey SM7 wedge. Nice. I mean, this is a nice wedge for 50 bucks. Shipped to my door for 66 bucks uh, this weekend. 66 all in after shipping? All in. That's, That's not bad. I, I, ain't bad. I see, I know Vokey's good. I've never swung them. I don't know if they're, they're, they're like. I, I, I'm not sure. I've never swung them. Either. I just heard they're really good. Yeah. They're like the, the Scotties of wedges, correct? Mm -hmm. Pretty yeah. much. So yeah. that's got to be a good deal. It sounds yeah. good. It is a good deal. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they are. What like do this. they go for brand new? Uh, probably 200 bucks a club, I Oof. bet. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, and saw it on eBay versus Facebook Marketplace. Like you open up your market to the entire United States. Absolutely. Versus yeah. just like locally. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes where they'll get you on golf clubs on eBay is that they'll tr they'll. Um, the club's listed for 30, this same club's listed for 30 bucks. You're like, fuck, that's a good deal. But then they want to charge you 60 bucks in shipping. Yes. So you got to be careful with that too. But uh, yeah, I mean, there you, you can find hidden gems on there anywhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Marketplace is like, there's so many golf clubs for sale on Marketplace. Like it took, I saw the putter a couple weeks ago and it took me like a month to sell this putter. And the putter was brand new. Mm -hmm. But there's so many putters out there for cheaper than what I was what I, what I was asking that like why wouldn't you just buy one of those? Yeah, yeah. Marketplace has like the bottom end at the bottom end of the market, you know, because it's like no one is gonna list a 60 year old putter or whatever a 40 year old putter on eBay because it's just not worth it to ship it across the for United sure. States. You know what I mean? Unless it's like a collector's. Yeah. Yes, yep, exactly. exactly. And so like they have the complete bottom end of the market figured out. But if you are like me. And you're trying to save some money, but you're also trying to find some like decent clubs that are still, you know, playable mm -hmm. and are at least somewhat modern. That's a hundred percent where you should go because the clubs are worth it to ship. Yep. And you can, you know, usually find pretty good deals on shipping and all that stuff. And a lot of the big secondhand golf stores, like, I don't know. See, I, I'm, I'm sure you're a hundred percent right. Like this is the best bang for your buck situation. But it's so hard for me to buy a club without swinging it or at least having it in my hands. It's just such a, I just don't think I could ever buy clubs online without having the opportunity to like swing them at a warehouse first or something. Like I have no problem like when we got our PXGs, swinging PXGs with the club fitter 
and then having them order them in. But like, I just, it's, it's hard for me to, to buy something that I can't see or like hold in my hands unless it's really, really cheap. Well, I think it's bec- probably because like you've been fitted for clubs before. It, yeah. I just like, even, even rummage sale clubs, like, I got to take it out of the bag and like do a little half a swing in the driveway at this person's rummage sale. Jake's Jake, his old wedges were Vokies as well. Okay. Um, Yeah. yeah, So he's buying just like the upgraded version from what he used to have. Pretty much. And like, I I mean like know the shaft length and you can, I mean, different wedges have different bounces on them and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so I just was like 50 degree F grind, you know, C shape bounce, whatever. You just Google in all that shit and find something similar. But now another fucking hot deal. Um, piping hot when it comes to new grips. So I, oh. I re-gripped <laughs> my current clubs. I just, I bought grips off golf pride. Mm-hmm. They were like 12 or 13 bucks a grip. And I, I don't know what did I buy 13 or 14 of them. Yeah. Um, I found damn near the, the same grips on TikTok for four bucks a grip. So I Ew. bought, I ended up buying 13, 14 grips for 50 some bucks. Do you put them on yourself? No, I, I went to Sweet Shots and had mm-hmm. them put on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, How much did they charge you to put them on? Like 35 bucks for nice. all of them. So I just nice. like pretty cheap. Because I did something similar where I had one, one of my buddies worked for the company, like the parent company of Golf Pride. So he got them super cheap. So I got Golf Pride grips for about the same. But then I took them to a golf shop in town, not Sweet Shots. It was before Sweet Shots existed. They charged me 15 bucks a club. To put the grips on. Jeez. What? Are you shitting Mm-mm. me? Dude, it's not that hard to put them on. Right. Well, now you can buy and So then it was just like, well, there goes my fucking deal. Yeah. Holy and shit. And these were the clubs that had the the alignment thing. So there was a, a special thing on the grip that was kind of a raised line yeah. to make sure your hand's in the right spot. So that's why I didn't want to put them on myself. Because I'm like, well, if I fuck up that alignment thing, then I'm going to be holding my clubs wrong. Yeah. So I brought them in. I'm like, well, I don't have a choice. This is the only place that's going to do it for me. Damn. Dude, if I think we're talking about the same golf store, I would say there's only one. Yeah. In town, so. um, and well, I did the same thing. Um, I got a club for cheap and it needed to be regripped. It was when I got my first Volky mm-hmm. um, and I brought it in there and I just bought a grip from them and then they did it for free. So they said, because yeah, because you, you bought, bought them grip, there. Yeah. But the grip was eight bucks. So yeah. at that point, I mean, you should have just. Yeah. Yeah. So the, they just threw away your whole deal. There. Right. Because I, I walked in with these 12 grips. I'm like, can you put these on my clubs? And they're like, yeah, but it's 15 bucks a club. I'm like, well, I can't do it myself, so go wow. ahead. Well, now on TikTok, you can even buy golf regripping sets. Like, I'm getting I'm getting videos pushed to me for, like, the little insert that goes into the vice grip and, like, the solution. It's, like, the mm-hmm. full set to regrip them yourself for... I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks. Yeah. But also like I'm only regripping my clubs every couple years. So do I need this shit laying around to use once every two years? Yeah, probably, probably not. not. Yeah. Um, I've also found this other guy on Instagram actually. And what he does is he goes and finds where golf manufacturers have their stuff made. I'm sure you've seen the guy too, mm-hmm. Ryan. Um, but yeah, he did the exact same thing where he was like, this is where Golf Pride and Titleist and all these people make their grips at. This is the factory overseas where it's all made at and you can buy your own custom grips, send them a design and mm-hmm. like, you know, here's their minimum order quantity and all that stuff. And I mean, he is making videos for people who are looking to get into like golf manufacturing and all that stuff. But what he's also actually doing is just giving everybody a really good heads up of like, Hey, these grips that I'm sure you bought off of TikTok shop, I'm sure were made in the exact same, probably. Yeah. Exact same factory as, you know, wherever the golf pride stuff is made. Well, they are they're, golf, they're legit golf prides. Are yeah. They not? Yeah. yeah. Unless like they're the same grips I have on my clubs. Oh, yeah, unless which it's now we're for sure going to get our clubs confused. P R Y D E. I don't know unless they did something with the logo to manipulate <laughs> P- it. P G A two R. Yeah, right. <laughs> P G A two R. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's good deals uh, all over the place out there. You just got to be willing to look. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just takes a little digging, like you said. Um, yeah, but eBay's got it, man. They got the best inventory out there. Better than all them. Hot, hot advice from Jake piping hot oh there goes three hundred dollars for me yeah yeah sorry so you, you, i mean yeah you go on alibaba or aliexpress you can even find full sets of like knockoff tailor made p79 tyler maids yeah tyler <laughs> tyler maids yeah mm-hmm. the pgx's too pgx's pgx's tyler maids yep. uh yeah 
Titleist. Mm-hmm. Um, How is that spelled different? Two T's? It's not. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's exact same. <laughs> yeah. Um, Callaways. Open week. Yep. Oh, oh, the open week. The open week. Oh, uh, yeah. European open. I got toasted for that, too, on the internet. Are you guys Bobby McIntyre fans? Not really. He just won the uh, was it Scott, Scottish, Scottish Open. Scottish open. Mm-hmm. Uh, said that, you know, and he's like, hey, what time's the presser tomorrow? And they're like, 3 p.m. He's like, I don't think I'll be in any condition to drive <laughs> at 3 p.m. tomorrow. I, when, you, when you get to see a personality behind these golfers, which I feel like for the longest time, before COVID and before the full swings, you didn't really get to see the personality behind them. It's kind of like a NASCAR or a tennis or whatever. But now, you know, you think these guys are, they're perfect, like clean individuals and like, no, they're not. They're going to go, if they win a tournament, they're going to go get fucking wasted afterwards. <laughs> and you got to have some respect for that type of thing. Well, I think it's, I think one of the main reasons they do that too, is like, obviously they love golf, but like winning a tournament does so much for your golf career. Like, you're invited to everything the rest yeah. of the year. Like you, yes, you win a shitload of money, but also like you don't, you're not playing for your ass every week from here on out. Cause like, it's not guaranteed you get to go to all these tournaments yeah. unless you're performing really well. Guaranteeing your card for another couple of years. Right. Like it's, right. it's insane. Yep. Uh, it's yeah. like financial freedom the, and job yeah. security. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, and then it's like, Hey, they're going to be like, your name is going to be in at the top of the media's list mm-hmm. to cover for the next four days. Right. Which also Sponsors. brings in sponsorship dollars. Yep. Boom. One tournament is all it takes. One tournament. And it's like, uh, yeah. I mean, if I just secured the bag for three more years by winning a tournament, I'm being wasted too. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, uh, and then, and it's also on top of just the glory of winning. Yes. You know, hundred um, percent. I feel like we just had a major championship. Obviously, Bryson, yeah, yeah, we Bryson t- wins the U.S. Open. Now we have the Open. And we were talking about, like, ah, that break is so long in between those two, and like, it's here. Yeah. It doesn't seem uh, – it, it seems like it's back to I back. I thought though. it was in the fall, to be honest. I mean, I it think did we, feel uh, like it would have been yeah. in the fall. What time uh, – can you look at what time the tee times are at on Thursday? Because don't you have to get up at a stupid it's hour? 3 a.m. probably. Oh, my God. For yeah. us to watch. Yes. Yeah. I wish they would do it like – um the UFC yeah, to 1 like 45 a.m. is or 1 35 a.m. is the very <laughs> first G time. Holy shit. If they, but, they should do it like the UFC, the UFC is going over to England for a main or uh, for a pay per view. And I think the I think the main card starts at like 3 a.m. in the UK so that it starts at 9 p.m. in the United States, hmm. which is I mean, that's fucking wild, actually, uh, to have to go on and fight at 3 a.m. as the opener of the main card. Yeah. But I think they get more money from like people watching it on tv than people going to right. watch for sure for yeah but just for the, f- the fighter yeah. themselves it's fucking whack yeah that, they can never you gotta start your CD. pre-fight routine at 11 p.m <laughs> um they uh, it would be sweet to to have like an all night like a, a night pga tournament like yeah, you go to one of golf? those yeah courses in arizona or something that and, would like, be sweet thursday through sunday is like you know the first tee times at 7 or 8 p.m. Yeah. And then the last tee time goes off at 10 p.m. It would have to be like stadium light golf, not like glow balls, because then the camera quality would just be garbage. Yeah, no, st- yeah. stadium light. Yeah, yep. just like Arizona, cor- the well, Arizona courses. It would work great, too. I was actually, I was watching this video on how they do the shot tracing uh, from each hole and how they get all the statistics and all that stuff. And they put some, like sonar sensors or some shit along every single hole. Yep. And so, like, you could do that at night. You could have the shot tracer mm. on every single ball. You could, like, you know, really zhuzh up the broadcast to make it really, really cool for nighttime too. Yeah, they did a they did a match at night, didn't they? Uh, oh, I don't know. maybe. Yeah, that sounds. Familiar. Why do I think that they? I, I I don't know. But you you look at YouTubers like Good Good, like they'll do their like meet up par three mm-hmm. events at night, which is. So, so it sweet. is cool. We gotta get that. I think the JT there. one we, was that night, wasn't it? Okay, that's the that's the one it was. I think there was one at yep. night. I don't know. There's been so many of them now. They all like it, yeah. mesh together. Yeah. Who do you uh, who do you guys got to uh, to win the open? Um, I don't. I really don't know. I mean, I know who I want to win. Um, I've decided recently that it is now. I have one single favorite golfer. I'm done flip-flopping, and it's going to be like this until he gets canceled, which I don't think he ever will. 
Uh, Tony Finau is now my number one favorite golfer, and That's I think he pick. will be until the end mm. of time. He's think, always been one that I've really liked, but I've never had like the favorite except for that one episode where we randomly chose Burned Weisberger. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, Bur- well, he was a live guy. He probably got dropped from live. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen him or heard of him in forever. No, but I've never, never had. He never like, fucking messaged us back either. So. Yeah, and we're like, his only fans in the United States. <coughs> burned, missed the cut at the uh, at the Scottish Open. Uh, Damn. Feel the burned. Whoops. Um, but yeah, so Tony Finau is my favorite. So I'm just gonna pick him. Yeah, I, the I mean the last couple of years, it, you know, we you got guys like Tom Kim, you got mm-hmm. guys like um, uh, Alex Fitzpatrick, Matt Fitzpatrick's yeah. brother. Yeah, they, they did, did well. Play, he played good last weekend. Yep, they did a full episode on him on on full swing. Um, I like him way more than his brother. We, we know, yeah, we know. <laughs> way <that>. less whiny because <laughs> yeah. he's less nerdy. You he's want less whiny? You want to bully uh, Matt I, Fitzpatrick? Yep, yeah, I do. That's Multi- crazy. Multi-millionaire. I mean. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you get sued real quick. Yeah, so I don't know. It'll be interesting because some sort, of, some dark horse will come out of it. I just hope, I hope Tiger makes the cut. I'd like to see him play the entire tournament, um, and he continues to say like, "Hey, I, I do believe I can still win." Whether there's, do you many believe people, he can still win? I no. think he's got no. one more tournament in him. Yeah, I agree. To win, um, I don't know if it's. I don't think it's going to be a major tournament, which is what like that's really all he's playing in these days. I mean, if he were to get into like uh, Wells Fargo or something like that, I think he's got a good chance. But I, I think he might have one more major in him in like two years, though. Yeah, and it'll be completely random. It'll be like Phil got second at the Masters last year, right? Like it'll be one more just flash in the pan thing of glory. Like 2019, when we all got super hyped when he won the Masters, yeah. I think I think he's got one more of those. He can put four days together. Yeah, but I, I he's not going to be consistently good anymore, which stinks and it's kind of sad. But it's age, you know. The man has had his legs reconstructed. Yeah, he's just been put through the ringer. He's getting old. Like I, I, I do just I think he's got one more and that's it. Yeah, I think um, it's 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 tough to say. I think if he can be top five after the cut is made that would be i sick. think he's got a really really good chance but mm-hmm. a lot of the time he's like top 20 um or he's like right on the verge of the cut line or not because going into saturday sunday like all that walking and just stress on the body is he's just not there anymore and mm-hmm. rightfully so the guy was he almost fucking died <laughs> right he almost cut his so, leg off um and i i don't think by tiger still playing i don't think it's tarnishing his legacy at all because he's 40 what 48 years old like no one is expecting a 48 year old to win. And if, but if it is Tiger was, Woods, if he was posting like 85s, it would be be a different story. Yeah, but he's he's not like it's he's, like 75, 76. So yeah, like yeah, he's just yeah. barely missing cuts, right. by like one or two right. strokes every time. He's not getting blown out. No, yeah, never finishing last, just kind of just barely missing. Middle them. of the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't heard of Charlie Woods in a while. You remember there was like a there was a there was a point like a couple months ago where he like that's all you saw in mm-hmm. the golf world. Do you think Charlie Woods becomes like a Bronny James? I hope not. I mean, because it's, it's unfortunate because Bronny James, no matter what he does, dude, it's always under a microscope. Correct. I mean, it's going to be the same for Charlie, but I, I just it's it's unfortunate, you know. Yeah. It's like they didn't do anything to deserve that. And, but also, it's like, like whatever they do, it'll never be good enough. I know. I know. And then okay. they'll and then they get propped up on the higher mm-hmm. stage and like I don't know, like kinda what's happening to Bronny is like I mean, he got I mean, he got drafted way before he ever should have been if like, it was I just merit based. Is that true you know? though? Like I don't know. I don't know enough. Yes. He's, he he got drafted one because LeBron's son and Correct. then two because okay, he has his genetics, he has potential, so they just drafted based on potential. But then you also think about, like, okay, he's a 55th pick. Like, you're not drafting somebody that's going to come play. He's going to be a project. You're going to kind of, like, hope to get a gem in the dark and hopefully he pans mm. out. Yeah. So he's not good enough on his own merit? Not right now. He's been struggling a lot in Summer League. Gotcha. So. Yeah, not on his own merit. Okay. No, it feels not. kind of like a pick was given simply for the fact that they could maybe get him to the point where he could play a couple games in the NBA. 
or at least for a little with bit. With his dad, and, and then, then he can with finally his dad, retire. And then that can be it. And then the Lakers can sell a shitload of tickets for those three nights. Yep. And they can sell a shitload of t-shirts and whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that worth the 55th overall pick? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, you're not really wasting a pick. I mean, no. the 55th guy is usually just going to play in the G League and then just probably fizzle out. That's be Go it. play yeah. overseas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's interesting because, like, the – the good like the good professional athletes who like they're they don't have huge names by any means um they seem to produce the best uh sons or daughters that are athletes so like you look at kenyon martin um kenyon martin has uh he has a kid or does he have twins i think he has one kid in the nba okay one kid in the nba carlos boozer has twins i want to say that are f like so good 16, at 16, 17, yeah. But it's like when you put the pressure of like my dad's Tiger Woods or my dad is LeBron mm. James, then it's it, – it, as a – Bronny's fucking 19 years old, is he not? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's – that's a terrible situation. But I don't think Charlie's going to be the same just for once fact that golf is an individual sport. Like Bronny James, you have to like first get lucky to get like the ball half the time and like work – yeah. or Charlie, it's literally just him going and playing. Yeah. So you can compare that. You can't compare Bronny to Bray or Bronny to LeBron because two different games, two different eras, two different people. So yeah, Tyler hates this conversation. So no, I'm just trying to think. He like, hates yeah, children. Yeah. No, yeah. I know I don't. He I hates don't. basketball. Oh, thousand, which yeah. I'm not. I mean, no, I'm just thinking of Charlie. Like, yeah, it's an individual sport. That's fine. But even, let's just say Charlie pans out to be a really good golfer. It's never going to be enough in the eyes of the media, Correct. unless. Yeah somehow he becomes the next tiger and breaks his dad's records. It's always going to be a, he's really, really good. He's the best of his generation. He's not as good as his dad. Mm -hmm. It's like the best sons of athletes. They're always like their dads are always middle of the road athletes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. And you look at like LeBron has childhood trauma because he never had a dad. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably what made like partially of what made him the player he is today. Uh, Tiger probably has childhood trauma for how fucking hard his dad was on him. Well, Tiger's not going to be that hard on Charlie because he doesn't want him to feel what he felt when he was a kid, you know? So it's like, I, I feel like there's some childhood trauma that just mm -hmm. like elevates these guys to a new level that their kids will never get because they want to flip the script in, in their in yeah. that generation. A lot of the <laughs> most elite athletes of all time have a crazy chip on the their shoulder. The number one determining factor in sports success is daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> like Tyson. God. Mike Tyson. Uh, I don't know his parents' situation. I don't either. He just he always talks about how he has a chip on his shoulder. We just he gotta assume like daddy issues if he's that good. Does Tom Brady have daddy issues? No, because he said his dad's his hero. Fuck. So two for <laughs> outlier, three. Outlier, outlier. Two for three. Well, let's just debunked. Let's just yep. stop. Well, let's stop with the examples because we're two for three right now. That's a great game in the MLB. Yeah, we'll sit there. We're batting six, 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 six. Yeah. Um, that's all I got for this week. Me too. Good week. Mm -hmm. Get out there this weekend, you guys. We need some. We need some more good stories for this next weekend. I, I so the five some I'm golfing with on Saturday is me, my two main golfing buddies, and then like our other really good friend who bought new clubs last year and has yet to touch them. <laughs> um, and then another friend who um, plays golf every once in a while, but he's he's kind of particular on who he plays with because he, um, like he he doesn't want to like embarrass himself or mm -hmm. like. He, he he thinks we're too good for him to play with, which we're not at all. Um, but we're finally able to get him out, and um, it'll be a good group. Good. Just go out, have some fun. Have fun. Get hammered, Ryan. The the one buddy who set the tea time up, his it's his wife's thirtieth birthday, oh, yeah, so yeah, all yeah, the gals yep. are getting together in the morning. We're gonna go golfing. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, and then <laughs> we'll, we'll meet up later in the day. All the kids are going to grandparents' house, so it was kidless. Fuck yeah. Kidless, five some, thirtieth birthday at the lake. Phenomenal combo. That's a, Shitty that's Sunday. a recipe for right mood, Ryan. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you. Guys. Love you. Yeah. Hey, you pipe that the wrong fucking way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, they cheated on that, they fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs>